The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. The UN Convention on the Rights of the Child is a list of rights for every child up to 18. The government has promised to make these rights a reality for all children and young people in Ireland. These rights are Number one, grow up. All children have the right to grow up, have food, somewhere to live, enough money to be able to go to the doctor. Number two, have a good life. All children have the right to go to school, to play and do fun things and activities. Number three, what's the best for you? All adults should do what is best for children. Number four, to be equal to other people. All children have the right to be treated fairly and equally. Number five, have a say. All children have the right to have a say in what happens in their lives and to be taken seriously by adults. Hello everyone, I'm Tanya Ward and I'm from the Children's Rights Alliance and I'm delighted to welcome you to today's launch of a major consultation which you took part in to explain what you think about your, right, what, about your rights in Ireland. Now, children's rights are protected in Ireland under the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child and the Irish government has pledged to uphold those rights at the UN. And those rights mean that you're going to be able to grow up safe and happy and protected. Um, Minister for Children, Youth, uh, Minister for Children, Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth is here with me today, uh, Roderick O'Gorman. Minister, welcome. Uh, you have responsibility for promoting UN Convention on the Rights of the Child across government and children's rights. Can you tell us why we're here today? Hi Tanya. Well, in 1989, Ireland signed a, a UN document called the, United, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child. And this is a document that outlines the rights that children and young people have in Ireland and what Ireland and other countries can do to protect those rights and to make those rights better. And every five years, the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child asks us to write a report on what we're doing to actually protect those rights and, and make them better. So last summer, we wanted to know the views of children and young people uh, to help the government and, and help me in making this report to the United Nations uh, Committee on the Rights of the Child. So over 1,200 children and young people took part in, in that consultation. Uh, and because of that wonderful response, we were able to produce a really fantastic report that highlights all the inputs from children and young people. And look, the last two years have been a challenge. We know that for everybody. School moved online, activities were cancelled, we weren't able to visit family and, and, and friends. But despite all of this, children and young people were able to tell us about what's good about being a young person in Ireland. And Minister, why was the consultation so important? Well, look, I, I think it's, it's very important that children and young people tell us about what's good, but also about what's not good ab about living in Ireland. Uh, and we need to know the things that children and young people uh, would like to see changed. And it's really important that they feel valued in terms of their views as well. And as Minister, it, it's my job to take uh, the views of young people to government uh, and make sure that government listens to this and make sure government responds to this uh, as well. And with the information that you've given us, uh, we can look to see what we can do to make children and young people's lives in Ireland better. And we can also tell the UN what you as children and young people think about life in Ireland right now. And that's why the consultation last summer was so important. So I'd really like to thank all the young people, all the children uh, for their insights, but also for all their parents, teachers, guardians, and the National Participation Office for their input. And I'd also like to thank all the other stakeholders who input it into the process as well. Thanks, Minister. What's really significant about this consultation is the fact that so many children and young people got to take part in it, over 1,200 children and young people. And I think what's really striking as well is so much work went into this to make this happen by schools and by young people online. So I'd like to introduce my two co-hosts for today, Leah and El Ebony. Welcome. Leah and Ebony uh, were on the Youth Advisory Group who helped design this consultation and they're here today to share uh, the findings from that consultation, what children and young people think about their rights in Ireland. So over to you, Leah. Dear Eve, got Gaina. Hi, everyone. Dear Eve, got Gaina. Hi, everyone. What we think was an opportunity to find out what children and young people across the country think about life in Ireland. 
A team of people collected this information from you and they wrote a report on what you had to say. The Minister has put this report on the government's website so that anyone in Ireland or around the world can read our opinions and see our drawings. So how did this all happen? In June last year, we asked a number of classes with their teachers across 21 primary schools to fill in a worksheet. The worksheet asked you to write and draw your answer to a number of questions. The first question was, what is best, what's the best thing about being a child in Ireland? And here's what you have to say. What we think are the best things about being a child in Ireland. Lots of parks and places to play. Sports, physical activity and playing outdoors. Meals, transport and money provided by family. Not needing to earn money. Free education. It's safe and there's no after the faster. Culture, language, music and history. Beauty of the country. Family and friends. And you drew some wonderful pictures to show us the best things of here. Here are some of them. Then we asked you what do you not like about being a child in Ireland and this is what you told us. What we don't like about being a child in Ireland. Not being able to play outdoors. Staying in the house is boring. Absence of indoor facilities. Problems with the education system. Art is a compulsory subject. Too much homework and lack of breaks at school. Bad weather and lots of rain. Pollution, littering and vandalism bullying by peers, siblings or older teens. And here's some more of your pictures showing some of the things you don't like about being a child in Ireland. Next we asked you if you could change one thing for children in Ireland, what would it be? This is some of the things you said and drew. What would we change for children in Ireland? Improved leisure, culture, culture play, play and sporting, sporting facilities. facilities. Improvements to the education system. No more poor people. Greater equality and end discrimination. Have the same rights as adults. That people in the future don't have to worry about things like cancer and sickness. Health and well-being. For an example, free health care and vaccines for children. Less violence and abuse. Improved environment and climate and ending pollution.
I think what's really significant about what we've heard from children, young children in Ireland is the fact that play and recreation is so important to them. So I really think government needs to look and think about how it's providing for play and culture. But you can also see that you really care about what's happening in education, you really care what's happening when it comes to poverty, and you really care about what's happening to our environment. Over to you. So young people aged between 13 and 18 years were also asked for their opinions on young people's rights in Ireland. Due to COVID-19, these consultations couldn't happen in person and instead were done through online video calls. Young people came from Corn and Oak councils across the country to represent the voices and, inf and opinions of young people. Like in primary school, children, they were asked three simple questions what we think are the best things about being a young person in Ireland. Outdoor space and clean air. Being able to go to school and feel safe at home and welcome. Leisure, youth services and mental health services. More accepting of diversity and self-expression. Opportunities to have our voices heard. Access to education, school, college and university. Wages for young people. Access to basic needs. Freedom to express ourselves. Being accepted and taken seriously for who you are. What we don't like about being a young person in Ireland. COVID-19 restrictions, including loss of freedom, increased pressure on parents and online school. Poverty and homelessness. Discrimination and stereotyping of young people. Problems with the education system. Reliance on exams and points. Compulsory subjects. Not enough adjustments for special education. Poor mental health supports. Inequalities experienced by certain groups of society, such as asylum seekers, homeless, minority groups, and people living outside urban areas. What we would change for young people in Ireland. Improved leisure facilities. More space for cycling safely. Reform of the education system. Accessibility for disabled people. Address inequality. Get rid of racism. Get rid of coronavirus. Improve how young people input into matters affecting their lives. As young people, we were also asked an extra question. How do you feel that young people's rights are valued in Ireland? What we think about how young people's rights are valued in Ireland. Good opportunities and basic rights. Access to free school. Lack of choice and facilities hinder leisure, culture and play. Not all children in Ireland, such as children who are homeless, in direct provision or in special care, can enjoy all of their rights. We need to hear more of the voices of young people who are marginalised and seldom heard. There's inequality in the healthcare system. The education system is not flexible and responsive to different needs. Housing and poverty needs to be addressed. There's a disparity between the privileged and those who do not have their basic needs met. Well, there you go. I hope you spotted some of your answers or drawings in this video. We've seen what we think are the best things about life in Ireland and what things we don't like as much. The things that we would like to change and how we feel that young people's rights are valued in Ireland. Thanks, Emily and Leah. So there, there you can see, you know, I think you really appreciate the work that's been done in Ireland to support your participation in youth programmes and in uh, the Corlin and Oag and, the, and in the, the Dáil. But what's really significant as well, I think, is that you're really concerned about the inequality in Ireland in housing, in, in terms of poverty, and in the stereotyping and discrimination that's happening in our schools today. Uh, thanks to all the young people that took part uh, in the advisory group. I'd like to thank uh, Ava, Abby, Conal, Liam, Harry, Ali, Ronan, Aoife, Megan, Dermot, Kira, Shifra and Peter for their help in voicing the children and young people's responses for today's event. They gave you a great flavour of what children and young people think today. And I'd like to welcome back our Minister, uh, Minister O'Gorman. 
Thanks very much, uh, Tanya, and thanks to, to Leah and, and Ebony as well. And thanks to all of you who gave your views as part of this consultation, whether it was in your classrooms or as part of the, the online consultation. And myself and my team, we've taken all your responses and we've built them into our, uh, our report, our state report to the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child. And in February this year, Ireland gave our fifth and our sixth reports to the UN Committee on the Rights of the Child in Geneva. In, in Switzerland and in January of next year Ireland will travel to Geneva to the UN committee to discuss the important issues uh, for children and for young people and as part of, uh, of preparing for that meeting we'll actually give them a copy of this uh, event to the UN committee so they can hear directly the views of, of children and young people. So as you know Ireland is really proud of what we do for children and young people and we always want to hear your views on these issues and this is why why we have the National Participation Office so we as government can get your, your, your views and put them as part of this process. So your, your words, your, your pictures, your, your, your ideas, your insights, they really make a, a huge difference to the future of children and young people in Ireland. So that's all we have time for today. So I'd like to thank you for joining us for today's launch. Big thank you to the Minister and his Department of Children Equality, Disability, Integration and Youth for hosting today's event. And finally, thank you to all the stakeholders who have contributed to this process. The full report, the posters and outputs are available on the department's website. And to finish the event, we're going to hear the words of Semilor Adijan, who's a pupil in Mr Mullins' fifth class at Corpus Christi Primary School in Limerick. And she's written a wonderful poem, I'm a Girl, which is sent to us as part of the consultation. Uh, it's just one example of the incredible submissions that children and young people made uh, with this consultation. And we thank you all for it. And the poem is read to us by Aoife Reedy from Dublin. <laughs> Who has seen the world in different shades yellow, green, and even grey? People wonder what I will become, but that knowledge is only given to some. An artist, a builder, what will I be? But that decision is only up to me. I am a girl who has seen the world in different shades. My uniqueness is what people wish for every day. <laughs>